This is the examination of the hidden human condition. You're listening to the Hidden Killers Podcast. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. Nima Romani is with us. She's president of the West Coast Trial Lawyers Association and a former federal prosecutor and one of our favorite guests here on the program. Hidden Killers contributor now as well. Nima, let's talk a little bit about Koberger and that alibi. I like to go driving at night. How in control of this case is Koberger in terms of what's coming out? And how in control of this case is Ann Taylor in terms of making statements? She does have a good record. I'm not trying to insult her whatsoever. But some of these statements and these alibis, they, they just don't seem to have a whole lot of merit some are just borderline crazy, but is this part of a strategy, a greater strategy that will make more sense as time goes on? Yeah, you, I also respect Ann Taylor. She's, I think, one of just a dozen or so death penalty qualified lawyers in Idaho. She's, you know, the public defender. So, you know, I think what's going on here is this, you know, some states require notice of an affirmative defense, like an alibi defense. I don't think this is a real alibi where someone's going to testify that, you know, Brian Koberger was with me on the night of the murders. I don't think we're going to hear a witness. But you know, what the defense is going to do is cross-examine the state's evidence. So they're going to go after the cell site evidence. We all know that it shows that Koberger's cell phone left Washington State, traveled to Idaho. It didn't make it all the way to the house where the victims were killed. It stopped. So obviously, the DA's office is going to argue that Koberger turned his phone off or put it in airplane mode or just left it there and then traveled to Moscow, you know, killed the victims, came back and turned his phone off or picked it up. But I think it's going to be a cross-examination type defense. They're going to go after the cell site evidence. I think the defense will also argue that the cell site evidence is inconsistent with mm -hmm. the surveillance evidence related to the Hyundai Elantra. So I think the argument's going to be, Tony, that, you know, because Koberger's phone wasn't at the scene of the murders, Koberger wasn't at the scene of the murders. And because the evidence shows that Koberger's phone was traveling, that, you know, they're going to say, well, Koberger was driving the night of the murders, but he didn't go anywhere near the house. So I think that's the alibi as opposed to sort of a traditional alibi that we would see. Which is a hard evidence, a hard alibi to go with in this case, because at the exact times of the murders is when his phone was off and he was heading that direction there prior and then leaving that direction thereafter how much room is there for questioning specifically like the triangulation data of the cell evidence i know they're going to try and say that it's inconsistent with some of the surveillance data and try and poke holes and create some doubt in the mind of the jury but in reality when we're taking emotion out of this and jurors who are not experts in things but i feel like they're probably going to try and make them think like they're smarter than they are how much room truly is there for arguing the cell data yeah, I don't think there's much room. Obviously, I'm pro prosecution, so I'm pretty biased. But you know, when I put witnesses on the stand, they can that cell phone evidence can put you within a few feet of where you are. It's very accurate. We know that this is important. There's not a whole lot of evidence that's come out in the Koberger case, of course, because of that really broad gag order. But you know, that first search warrant affidavit. I mean, law enforcement spent a lot of time talking about the cell phone, and you know, I think the DA's office is really you know a couple steps ahead. They're they're really explaining away the defense's alibi before they've even presented their case. So this is something I fully expect the prosecution to put presenting their case in chief, come out really strong, explain that Koberger, you know, is a PhD student, he understands criminal justice, he understands cell phone issues, and that's why he turned his phone off. But you know, the problem is even when the phone wasn't there the night of the murders, there's many other times where it pinged right outside of that house. So it does mm -hmm. support some sort of stalking type theory for the state. Yeah, very much so. It just is as quickly as they, they seem to maybe gain a few inches. It's like, well, this little piece over here kind of pulls you right back. Given that there isn't much of a motive that we know of right now for the murders, how do you think that will play in the trial? Are we going to be presented with a motive from the prosecution? And if so, where do you think that's possibly going to go? I think we do need some sort of motive. Obviously, we all know it's not an element of the crime. It doesn't have to be proven by the state. There's jury instructions in every state that say that. But, you know, jurors are ordinary people, and they're going to want to know, 
why would someone kill four college students in such a horrific, gruesome way? They're going to want to know the why. So, again, limited information that's come out of the case. But, you know, if you believe what's being reported is there's some Instagram messages. I don't think they were replied to. There's some reports that Koberger went to the restaurant where two of the victims were. I think we're going to get some sort of stalking type theory in this case. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're talking about young, three young women. So you know, I think it makes sense. I don't know for certain if that's the direction the state's going to go in, but I think we're going to want to come up with some sort of theory as to why someone would do this. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruschi. 